Hi guys, welcome to Studio Wildlife. This video is part two of my two-part series on how to paint a cat. In the last video, you saw me drawing a cat and teaching you how to draw a cat. Now, we're gonna paint it. For this painting, I used an Arteza Prime canvas. The canvas is 16 inches by 12 inches and it's about roughly A3 in size. It's a little bit smaller. You're going to need a palette. Uh, I just use these cheap disposable palettes that cost about two pounds from my local hobby craft. Um, I can usually make these last about two to three paintings for each sheet. Next, you're gonna need brushes. Here's just a small selection of my brushes. I only use about six brushes in this. Um, I'll give you a list of what they are in the description. So here you can see the basic materials that I use. So here are some of the paints that I use for this painting. Um, I don't really use any particular brand, I just like the colours. Um, although my favourite are the uh, um, abstract acrylic paints. They're cheap, really affordable and quite good quality paints. And the paints that I used were Mars Black, Payne's Grey, Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Primary Blue, and titanium white. I added some extra colours which were pale violet and cadmium red which you can't actually see here but I use them later on in the painting. To start my painting I just do a thin wash of Payne's grey paints, this is just to tone it down a little bit. And then I start with background which is just a mix of Payne's grey and raw umber. Then I block in the face. Um, I started painting it in a different way than I usually do, which was to block in the dark areas and work in a small area at a time. But then I felt that this wasn't working for me, so I decided to block in the whole painting um, like I usually do. So here you can see me blocking in the painting with a small uh, round pointed brush. Um, this allows me to block it in without thinking about too much of the detail, but it gives me the control that I need to do accurate shapes, accurate colours and accurate predictions to build up the form. Um, so here I am just blocking it in with that round brush. Uh, I then move on to glazing the background a little bit. What I noticed was the cat didn't really fit very well, so I needed to warm the background up. All I did was glaze in some burnt umber on the background, uh, sorry, some burnt sienna in the background, uh, just to warm that background up and add a little bit more contrast. Um, then I wasn't really very happy with the cat itself, so what I had to do was darken it up. All I used was a mix of Payne's grey and raw umber, uh, and just glazed it over the cat to darken it up. I then wanted to fit it in the background a little bit more, so I added some white spots and some darker areas to that background just using thin glazes, which helped smooth that background and give it a more finished appearance. So here you can see me using a large flat brush to do that. Then, as the painting progressed, or as I saw at this point, I wasn't quite happy with the colours of the cat. Um, so what I ended up doing was doing another glaze using a pale violet paint. And this allowed me to purple it up, so you can see me doing this here. Uh, and it matched more to the colour that I wanted it to be. I then built up on top of this the detail. So I started with a mix of Payne's Grey and Raw Umber to add the darks. I'm only using thin washes so you can still pick out some of that purple underneath. I added some white to that and a little bit of yellow to bring out the highlights and show some areas of where the warm light would be hitting. Here I'm just using a small angled brush to do that, um, but you could use any brush. As long as it's small enough, the small detail brush would be perfect or a small flat brush would work just as well. All I'm doing is blocking in the darks, blocking in the areas of the light. Um, not my final darks and my final lights, but I'm just blocking them in so that I can see further down in my painting what I need to do. Next, I use a lot more white mixed with the violet to bring out the pure highlights that I'm going to be using. I'm not using pure white at this stage. Um, I'm just using a mix of the white with the violet to add the highlights in the areas where the light is hitting. Um, this is a stage that really brings out the shape of that cat and the form of the painting. Now here you can see a little close up of what it's looking like. Next to start with the eyes, I use yellow and then mix a little bit of raw umber with that yellow to add the dark points. I then use black for the pupil, which is not a perfect circle, it's more like a squashed oval. Uh, and finish it off with 
white or white mixed with a little bit of Payne's grey um, for the highlights. For the body of the cat, I use the round brush again because it allows me to have a lot of control, it allows me to do detailed fur, but it also allows me to blend some of the fur together to give it a softer, fluffier appearance. All I'm doing is using a mix of Payne's Grey, Raw Umber and the Violet with increasing layers of white paint added on top um, to build up the fur details and the shapes. You can see how I paint fur more closely in other videos that I have. I'll put a link down in the description to that or you can check out my channel studiowildlife.com uh, for more videos. You can see me building up the lighter areas with a round brush. For the finishing touches I add the whiskers. For this step I use a sword liner brush. Um, I've only recently got this brush but it's brilliant for adding whiskers and fine details. All I'm doing is using very thin watered down paint. Uh, I'm using white and I'm just building up layers of fur with the very tip of that sword liner brush. Uh, sorry, building up the layers of the whiskers. I do actually make a mistake at this point. Um, I add a whisker where I don't want it to go. Um, but it's a really easy fix. All I do is wet my finger a little bit, rub the paint away before it dries, and then use a paper towel to remove that excess paint and it's as good as new. So it just goes to show that even if you make mistakes, they can be very easily fixed. I finished painting off with my signature, as I always do, and as you should always do, um, when it's an original piece. For this, I'm just using a small detail brush and some black paint. I make sure my signature stands out, but not so much that it detracts from the picture. So it's very easily visible, but doesn't ruin the picture and doesn't take the viewer's eye away from the picture. Here's the finished painting. Um, this was a commission for a friend from university. They loved it. They were really happy with it. Um, and it's something that I really enjoyed to paint. Um, I hope you found these videos useful and I hope you start to paint your own cats. Um, I'd love to see those cats if you tag me in them at studiowildlife underscore art on Instagram or share them with me in the comments below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like it and subscribe to the channel. And remember, as always, thank you for watching. Please make sure to check out studiowildlife.com for more wildlife art tips.